Hi, it's Achim from American Runabouts. Um, since the Invader video got online with the finished paint, my YouTube channel kind of exploded, which of course I appreciate, it's great. Um, so tons of new subscribers and I received a lot of emails and comments on uh, how to do this metal flake paint job. So I decided to make a quick video and explain a little bit more into detail how I'm doing this. So before I start, I have three things. First of all, be aware that all this paint and all this stuff is really poisonous, so please uh, take care of your health and use a proper mask, um, use a ventilated area, use gloves when you handle that stuff and take care of yourself. Second, what I'm, what I'm showing here or what I'm explaining here is the way I'm doing it. Um, there's probably a hundred different ways that also work. So this is just based on my experience and um, I cannot guarantee that it works for you. It works for me and, and uh, the results are good. And um, yeah, just, just be aware of that, that it's not the holy grail of painting. Third thing is um, what I'm explaining here is, is working for, for boats, for cars, for bikes. I did all of these, um, it, it's all the same, but please do not um, mix up these things, especially when we talk boats with metal flake gel coat. So all these original metal flake boats that you see like the old Glustron Carlsons or the Mastercraft or whatever, that's gel coat. So it has nothing to do with paint. So in that case, you have the mold of the boat, clear gel coat is applied to the mold, then is clear gel coat mixed with metal flakes, and then they build the hull of the boat. So it's, it's a negative thing. And um, so when, when you want to restore these, you need to go for metal flake gel coat. I actually have a project coming up where I'm, I'm spraying metal flake gel coat. So I'm, I'm redoing a Glaston Carlson CV19. And I'll make a video about this and we'll talk about the clear metal flake gel coat, but it's a complete different thing and it's not covered in this video. So today we talk about paint. So the metal flake paint job, as you see it on the Invader, is, is pretty work intense. So the first thing, you, I mean, you do your normal prep work, no matter what it is, if it is if um, fiberglass or metal, whatever, you do your normal preparation. So you sand it, you, um, you fair it, you put putty on it you fair it again. Um, I usually use a good epoxy sealer on the surface. <clears throat> and before you paint on that, you again have to sand it. Always make sure you properly sand it. I'm not sure when you watched the Invader uh, series, you saw that I had a couple of issues when I removed the, the, the tape um, in between the paint coats. I had a couple of things where it peeled off the paint and obviously there, this epoxy um, that I, I had underneath was not sanded properly and then the, the color doesn't stick really. All right, then the first thing you need is you need to put a base coat underneath your flakes. So that base coat can be any color. So on the original, flake jobs, it's normally black. The problem is if you, for example, do a, a gold metal flake job and you have a black base coat underneath, it, you will need tons of flakes to cover that and, and, get a, uh, um, and get a proper job where you don't see any black anymore. Obviously, you can use that as an effect. So there's no rule what to use. So you, you, you can put any color underneath any flakes. So just, just try it. And that's the, the, the first important thing. Always make yourself a test panel. Grab some, some piece of sheet metal. Just let me check for a second. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a piece here, for example. Um, you can see there was, um, I put the black underneath and sent some gold because I wanted to see how that, how that turns out. So always use the piece and make yourself a sample. 
Um, so you put that base coat on and you use space. Of course, theoretically, you can use acrylic paint as well. If you do so, again, make a test and make a long-term test. If you put that acrylic down, give it all the time it needs so that the, the thinner can really off-gas and that it's really dry and then you have to sand it a little bit again. That's the reason I don't use acrylic underneath flakes. So I always use a base coat. It dries really fast and you can immediately paint on top of it. So you put your base coat on, you give it 20 minutes or whatever um, to dry and then you start with your flakes. So when you, when you put your flakes in, um, don't use clear coat, or actually I don't use clear coat. Um, normally when you watch videos or when you, when you look at descriptions, also from the manufacturers of the flakes, they always tend to tell you mix the flakes with clear coat. And um, my experience is that if you do that, first of all, you build up really thick layers because clear coat obviously builds up. It takes a lot more time to dry and it's much more likely that you get runs, especially if you paint on, um, on the side of a vehicle, for example. So if, if, if it's flat, it's not an issue, but on the sides, it's always, always a problem. So what you want to use is clear binder. Um, the thing with the clear binder is that it, it basically just works as a glue for the flakes and it dries really fast and it allows you to build a couple of layers in a, in a reasonable time and you don't get these super thick layers because always, I mean, always keep in mind you have to put clear coat on top of that. So in the end, you will have far too much material on the surface and if you have a little bit of bending or whatever, especially on a boat, it will crack. So now let's talk about flake sizes. I normally use 0.2 millimeters and 0.6 millimeters. There's also one millimeter flakes, but they are a pain in the butt to work with because you need a really, really big tip. You basically need a 3.0 tip to get them on. Um, if they start to stand in the material, it takes you, I mean, you need tons of clear to cover that. So uh, unless it's a very special thing, uh, I wouldn't use them. I use one mil in, in gel coat, but that's a complete different substance. It's much thicker and it's easier to, to work with. So what I normally do is I mix those flakes. So if I, like on the, on the Invader, I used 0.2 and 0.6. The good thing on the 0.2 is as they're so small, you can, um, they, they help you to cover the surface and to cover the base coat. And the 0.6 usually um, bring up that sparkle that you, that you want to achieve. And uh, if you would only use um, 0.6, again, you need more layers to cover the base coat. So experiment a little bit. On the Invader, for example, I used um, in 500 mil of um, binder, I used two tablespoons of 0.2 and one tablespoon of 0.6. Which brings me to the next topic. How much flakes in how much binder? So what ratio? Again, you can read a ton of different things and everybody comes up with a different suge uh, suggestion. And um, the thing is, if you use not enough, again, you need more and more and more layers to reach coverage. If you use too much, there's always the risk that it clongs the, um, the nozzle, the tip of your paint gun. So what I do is I put it in my in my mixing cup and I start to steer it. And when you bring up that steering stick, you see the paint and the flakes flow off. And what stays then gives you a pretty good indication of how much coverage you will reach with the amount you have in your, um, in your material now. So you will, you will keep kind of a layer. So the flakes that, that run off, 
are basically too much and what stays shows you how much coverage you've reached. If it's a little bit too much, it's better than a little bit, um, a little bit too less. Okay, so how to apply it? I always use, um, use a normal paint gun with, um, with, a, with a cup on top for my base coat and afterwards for my clear and for my flakes I always use something um, with, a, with a cup, so a suction um, fed gun. So I have this one here which has a 0.7 nozzle and this has a 0.9. So normally even for the uh, 0.6 flakes the, the 1.7 tip is enough. What I'm doing here, and actually you can hear that, is I have a couple of, of balls from a ball bearing that I cleaned in, in paint thinner and that I have in the cup. So uh, when I have the flakes in, I can shake that and they help me to steer the flakes in the paint. There is special, um, there is special paint um, guns that have like a steering inside. They're super expensive and super rare. I've, I've uh, never found one for a reasonable price, but that works, works pretty nice. So you shake it a bit, you spray, you shake it a bit, you spray. A lot of people also ask how to set up the gun. Um, so what I'm doing is when you have a look at the gun, you can control the um, amount of, of, of air here, it's always fully open. So obviously you have a, the small gauge here that shows you how much pressure and there you can adjust your flow. You do not adjust the flow on the, on the paint gun. Um, the same, is, the same thing here is for the material. Material I always have fully open and this is um, the, the trigger. So what I do is when I screw it in, I press um, the trigger and then I start screwing it in till I, till I hit the end. So now I would actually, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, when I start screwing it in, I would start moving the handle or the, the, the trigger forward. So when I reach it, I stop. So that's how I set up my gun. Regarding um, pressure, <sighs> figure it out. As I said again, do your test panel. I found that the pressure ratings that you normally get from the manufacturer of the paint, like from the binder that you use, is not enough to get a, a, good, sp uh, um, a good spray result with the flakes. So I usually uh, take a little bit more pressure but give it a try, do this test panel. That's the most important thing. You never want to try this on your actual project, on your car, on your boat, whatever. So um, you want to have the, the angle as, as, as wide as possible. And then you start um, putting on the first layer and you do 50% um, overlap um, when, you, when you spray. All right. Um, you do this, you do your first coat, you let it dry um, till it's, it's not really sticky anymore. So usually about, if it's 20 degrees in the workshop, it should be around 15 to 20 minutes. And then you put on the second coat, the third coat, as much as you, as you need to reach coverage. I usually do not more than three layers because then again, you build up far too much material. And um, if you have enough flakes in your binder, you should reach coverage usually after two layers. So then you let that dry and you let that dry at least an hour or let, again, that's what I do um, because you want all the, um, the thinner from the binder to really off gas. Otherwise you get bubbles in, and, and issues in your clear coat. And then you start clear coating. So what I do with my clear coat is I do not put any thinner in it. So the clear coat is mixed with hardener, usually two to one. And then the manufacturer normally says around 10% of thinner. I do not put any thinner in. I spray it normally with a 1.4, sometimes with a, with a 1.8. Again, if it's a flat surface, uh, 1.8 can put on more material and it's easy to cover the flakes. Be careful if you paint the side panel 
um, and you put too much on, you get these runs. On the metal flake paint job, the, the runs are not that, that much of an issue because you have to sand anyway. But, it, but, but you want to avoid that, obviously. So normally, 1.4 nozzle, no thinner, so it builds up a little bit thicker, and then you put it on. And normally, what I do is I do th uh, three thick layers with about 20 to 30 minutes in between. And then you let that dry at least 24 hours, better a little bit longer. I mean, if you have a paint booth and you, and you can heat it up, it's a different story. But if you're the, the do-it-yourself guy and you have a, just a regular shop um, and no paint booth, at least 24 hours. Then you start sanding it. So <laughs> there's, again, two ways of doing it. Some people will tell you you have to wet sand. I usually start dry sanding because what you want to do in the first place, you want to get rid of all the bumps that are created by the flakes. So normally you have like an orange peel surface and you want to sand it down so all the, the high spots are gone and you have a level surface. So if you do that dry, it's much easier to see that than if you do it wet because if it's wet, it's always shiny. And if you do it uh, dry, you can actually see that the high spots get dull and you have the shiny spots, which are the low spots. So I usually start with a 320 grit on a, um, on a disc sander. So an orbital disc sander like this. And um, what I use is I use a foam pad between the sander and the sandpaper, especially if you go towards the edges. Be careful. If you hit the edge of, uh, of your project with the sander, you will sand through these flakes like this. So be careful. If you're un uh, unsure if that works, do it by hand and, and use a foam uh, um, a sponge or something um, in your hand to follow the contour of your project. Never hit it with the sander or use one of these thick foam pads. If you want to be super cautious, you can actually use two of these foam pads. They are normally like eight to 10 millimeters, at least what we can get here in Germany. So sometimes I put two on top of each other and then put the sandpaper on top of that. So if I manage to, uh, to sand it down, get my, my flat surface, 360. That's the point when I put on my last layer of clear. So you've sanded it down, you wipe it down with uh, silicone remover once more, and then uh, maybe you want to take one of these um, um, anti-dust in, in, in the German word is Honigtuch. I have no idea what the, what the English term is. Um, but one of these, these special wipes to, to get off all the dust and everything. And then you put on your final coat. And now you have to be careful because now you don't want to sand again. So no runs, no sacks, not too much material. So use a 1.3, 1. I have my clear gun, is this one here, uh, which has a 1.3 tip. And that's normally what I only use for clear coat. And on this last clear coat, you put thinner in because you want it to, to spread out to a super nice surface. And um, I mean, that's, that's the final finish of your, uh, of your project. So one or two coats. And um, after that, you can, of course, do some wet sanding with uh, like a 2000 uh, grit wet sandpaper and then give it a polish. But if your preparation was good, normally you should be fine with that clear coat. All right. Um, if you have questions, comments, please ask them in the comment section. You can always drop me a personal message as well. Thanks for watching. If you've not subscribed yet, please do so. And also check out our Facebook page. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.